greatly reaffirming the mission of this incredible university. I can't say enough thank you to Jim and Mary for this kind act, this generous act, and their family in putting Vanderbilt very much part of their family, part of their lives, and allowing us to be part of telling that story. Uh, the fifth chancellor, Chancellor Alexander Hurd, said, and I think it's important to remember this, the university is only as great as what the alumni do after they leave. And we are so proud of the kids coming in, but the true testament is what do these youngsters do to go out to make a better world, to become leaders, and to become engaged citizens locally, nationally, and globally. And so I'm very proud to call Jim's a double door, and Mary, you're a history major like I am. So let me say you affirm Chancellor Hurd's message to all of us is measure by what we do in the world. This is a transformative gift, and it's a timeless gift. And I say those things because we are a university that creates, discovers, reinterprets knowledge. And what better way to get a foundation for studying Nashville, Tennessee, this great nation of ours, and globally, than peering through these papers and going on this journey from Vanderbilt all the way to Beijing, and the difference that Mary and Jim both made in so many fundamental ways. So this is a gift that we'll keep on giving. And Jim said to me, boy, this library is just so beautiful, and you've done such a great job of fixing it up. And I took that as a very good sign because he remembers what it was like, and he was actually in here as a student. He was in here as a student. So this gift is for us to nurture, to cherish, and to bring students, faculty, leaders in the community, scholars from around the world, to write history, to understand who we are as a university, as a state, as a nation, and as a people. So. Uh, Thank you very, very much. I had the privilege of uh, speaking to 1,600 really excited freshmen last Sunday as we welcomed them to the campus. And you look out on this kind of diverse, excited, anxious group, and you think, wow, what potential. And as I look back at that, I say, I hope, and I'm sure, but I really hope that there's a Mary Gorman and a Jim Sasser in that group, <laughs> because no one ever starts out seeing themselves that way. And look what you have done, and you're an inspiration to all of us, and I'm sure to them as well. So thank you very much, and let me ask you, Mary and Jim, to come up and say a few words, if you don't mind. To some thanks. First of all, a huge thank you to Chancellor Nick Zeppos and Lydia for hosting this beautiful event tonight. You know, we're mighty proud of you, Chancellor. He's taken this university in all kinds of exciting directions at the same time, and we're here with your lead, we'll follow. Um, thank you, Connie Benita Dowell, who made the call to us and suggested that our papers would be safe here, and boy, is she. Um, she does a super job. She's got a lot of patience. She's a problem solver and a dear friend, and the papers are in good hands. I want to thank you to the faculty members who are here tonight at this great university, who teach critical thinking, graduating students who become responsible, thoughtful citizens. I want to thank Jim's former staffers. Many are here, both uh, from the campaign staff and the Senate staff, who did a lot of the research, who drafted a lot of the papers that are coming now into the collection, and who also worked mighty hard for 18 years taking care of the people of Tennessee, from that lovely lady who 
is now a widow in East Tennessee who couldn't get her real retirement benefits to the veteran down in West Tennessee who was having health issues. Uh, his staff was there as well as the senator. Um, I want to thank you to our friends who joined us, many of whom have been friends way before Jim ever thought about politics. And thank you for those who joined us on this incredible journey, walking the walk with us across the state of Tennessee. I want to thank our children, Gray and Elizabeth Sasser, who were always ready to pick up and go whenever we ask, and do whatever we ask, and um, often joined by their Aunt Jo back there, going across the state, crisscrossing it, asking for people to support their dad and to their other aunt who's here, Faith Foster, who would come in and swoop them up and make sure they were loved and fed and cared for till she sent them back off on the campaign trail. And to um, Catherine and Jimbo, who joined our family 100%, who bring lots of smarts and a lot of good humor, and three beautiful granddaughters. Martha, who you who I hope you got to see tonight, Martha Grace Sasser and Mary Hayden Sasser and Ella Valentine Parrott, who are here. So, but a special thanks to my husband of 51 years who has taken me on this incredible journey. Well, um, boy, <laughs> you know, you can stand here and get the big head about all this, <laughs> but I see uh, John Sigenthaler in the audience, and I remember one time John Sigenthaler was introducing me, and my staff had given him a long list of my so-called accomplishments, and he looked at me before introducing me and said, should I read all of this? <laughs> so wishing to appear modest before the then publisher of the National Tennessee, and I said, oh no, John, don't read all of that. And he got up and he said, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Jim, Senator Jim Sasser, and the less said about him, the better. <laughs> well, I too want to thank my dear friends for many years uh, for coming here, particularly uh, Governor Senator David Pryor and his wonderful wife Barbara. I want to thank General Attorney General Bob Cooper for joining us this evening and, and uh, former Congressman John Tanner and his wife Betty Ann. Lincoln Davis and his wife Linda I think are here and I see uh, the uh, Mayor Bill Purcell has joined us, as has Judge Gil Merritt and Judge Tom Weisman, two of the outstanding federal judges in this state who happen to know a certain senator at one time in their life. <laughs> <laughs> we thought very highly of them. And uh, they have lived up to their own uh, uh, expectations and mine as well. Well, Mary and I are really honored to have our papers here at Vanderbilt University. When Connie Dow, I think, first contacted us about it, I was just overwhelmed that Vanderbilt would be interested in our career or our papers. And so, what, 200 boxes later? 300. 300. <laughs> we have landed this deluge at County's doorstep, and she has wonderfully agreed to look after it and take care of it. And I'm just, uh, it's amazing to me to think that students and scholars and teachers and <coughs> professors would be interested in what Mary and I have done over our lifetime professionally. But apparently they are, and we're very flattered with that. And when I think back on it, we were looking at some of the things. I remember the times in China. We'd been in China about 90 days when the Chinese army started launching missiles over the Taiwan Strait. And we sent two carrier battle groups in there. Those were sweaty palm days. 
And we worked and got that situation, I think, in good shape. We've established a firm relationship with the second largest economy in the world of 1.3 billion people. There are potholes in the road, and there will be for a long time. But I don't see any real conflict between our two great countries anytime in the near future, I mean anytime in this century. Let me just conclude by saying a word about our old alma mater Vanderbilt and how much it means to us and what good hands it's in now. I never thought there would be another chancellor here at Vanderbilt who could equal Alexander Hurd. I think in Nick Zappos, uh, we have one who may even excel Alex. He has taken this university, no student graduates from here in debt. You might have seen the new uh, dormitories being built here on West End. Uh, $120 million, I think, Chancellor, was that it? Not a, all of that is going to be paid for in cash, no money borrowed. Terrific job. But more importantly, he has stuck with the Vanderbilt tradition of teaching the humanities. And I read about all of these young people who are going to college online, or who just want to be software managers and that sort of thing. Well, that's not what Vanderbilt's about. Vanderbilt's about teaching about civilization. It's about teaching history. It's about political science. It's about teaching how to, what the world was before and what we want the world to be in the future. And I think Vanderbilt is in good, great hands with Chancellor Nick Zappos. So, so I will conclude by just saying thank you very much to all of our friends who come here. And in the words of a grand old Tennessee politician of some years ago, them's my convictions. If you don't like them, I'll change them. <laughs>